Oh god, here's a movie I really hoped I never have to see again. Well, at least this godforsaken week is almost over with now. Just one more to go after this. Hey, you've been making me watch these with you, so I'm not feeling any better either. Well, agony loves company. Let's just be fair for a moment. I HATE KEITH LEMON AND EVERYTHING HE REPRESENTS! That's being fair? It is in my case because I have no good words to say for this prick. For those who are blissfully unaware, Keith Lemon is a character created by character actor Lee Francis, previously known for his Channel 4 sketch show, Bo Selector, where he would play exaggerated parodies of celebrities using spitting image-style latex masks and very over-the-top performances. Eventually, he decided to make a character who felt like he was a real person, by basically spending his entire life as him. And thus, Keith Lemon was born, starting off with the show called Lemonade, and then gained footing in the British public eye with being the host of the panel show Celebrity Juice, the reboot of Through the Keyhole, and basically becoming the face of ITV2, which is sort of like being the mascot for a donkey show. ITV2 is basically the place you go when you want intelligence to die. It's full of garbage reality TV shows, awful comedy shows, and an overemphasis on looks and the lowest common denominator humour. And granted, those things aren't bad in and of themselves, but the way ITV2 does them, it really makes you despair for the human race. And Keith represents all of that. He looks ridiculous, he's annoying, crass, and unapologetic in his ways, which I wouldn't mind if he was funny. Let me guess. He's not funny. Oh, you must be psychic. Oh yeah, the mixture of his awful delivery and terrible jokes makes him one of the worst comedic players in history. And yet, people love him, but evidently not enough to see his movie, which barely cracked the top five on a slow week and bombed at the box office. Which, given that it had a mini budget of just five million, that is truly pathetic. So, the... Should we really even call them plots at this point? All the movies we looked at this month have only had the barest scraps of a plot that they've cack-handedly tried to staple together, and this movie is no exception. The film opens up with Keith having sex with Kelly Brook. Good to see it opens at its lowest. Of course, it's a dream sequence, which also includes a random reference to Bo Selector in there. Oh, and that won't be the last one we see either. And when he wakes up, we see that he's a down-on-his-luck struggling inventor, as opposed to a TV presenter like he's always been before, so that must be really confusing for Keith Lemon fans. At a convention of inventions, another struggling inventor palms off his brand new smartphone to him because he can't shift them, and Keith reinvents it and gets incredibly rich from it, and then goes on to live a life of decadent debauchery. So basically, it's your typical rags-to-riches story, which for some reason has always been a popular formula in comedies. But don't expect it to be a trading places or the jerk kind of movie, since this movie redefines disgusting and brainless when it comes to comedy. The movie pulls no punches in showing us what it can get away with within its rating. R shots, gross softcore sex scenes, and basically everything else Keith can do while keeping the movie from being something you could buy in a sex shop in Slough. Now granted, I'm not adverse to coarse vulgar humour. Hell, I talked about bottom last month. But here, there's no sense of restraint, it's presented and performed horribly, and with our main character being so unfunny and so unlikable, it just makes everything fall apart. If Keith was humorous and charming, then maybe, just maybe, this could have worked. Like how the good Adam Sandler movie works. There are good Adam Sandler movies? Well, not many, but there are some out there. Like how a broken clock is right twice a day, Adam Sandler can make a good movie once every decade. Lee Francis is terrible when performing Keith, and a lot of that comes from his accent. He really overemphasizes that Leeds accent, to the point where in doing so, he has to speak very slowly and essentially pauses between each word. Allow me to introduce you to something that has traveled back from the future to the past. I'd like to be a household name with my product, Securipore, which I've accidentally pre-ordered a million of from Evil Steve. That's because I'm numerically dyslexic. Making the flow of his speech really grating and annoying. He sounds like a perverted primary school teacher talking down to a bunch of kids, all of whom are wondering why a combination of Donald Trump, Justin Lee Collins, and Russell Brand is their teacher. So that's a big problem right there. But what's worse than having an annoying voice? Having it speak lines like this. Rosie, the only thing that's gonna be expanding slowly is my big fat talent 
Molly Whacker in your mouth when we're making sweet love. <laughs> I did the, but I did. Okay, how is it that the show we talked about a few months back could have a whole episode dedicated to pubic hair, yet still be less gross and crass than this? Don't ask me, because all I'm thinking right now is what I want to have removed more, my eyes or my ears. I'd go with the nose. Why your nose? Because this movie stinks! And this movie is so relentless with its jokes, it barely leaves you time to even consider how bad the last joke was before they put another one in. But at the same time, it really drains these jokes dry. More importantly though, do you think we'll have enough money to pay for a cock enlargement for myself? Uh. Be like a gift for myself. It'll be like a Christmas present. Birthday present. Much like you do with a lemon? I'll let that slide for now. It draws out these jokes so much and lingers on the punchlines for so long, which just lets it sit in your head and make you reel about how awful it was. And then just as it's left your head, a new one pops up and does the same thing all over again. Honestly, about 20 minutes into this movie and I actually got a headache. And to make things worse, most movies that have a main character like this have them be deliberately not likable. It doesn't normally work, but that's the way that they do it. But here, he's supposed to be the hero, despite how he's completely loathsome, not just because of his gross attitude, but he doesn't care about anybody but himself. Now all we have to do is pay for the pools, get you back to Leeds to father your unborn love child, and live happily ever after with Rosie. Sometimes the right thing isn't always the black and white thing. What are you going to do with it all, Miss Eleven? The question ain't what am I going to do with it all. The question is what I am not going to do with it all. <laughs> He gets his phone to be a success by putting a lemon on the back of it, and everybody finds that amazing. I would complain, but that did just come after this scene. And give some sort of like, sort of, mop, 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 mop action. Mop, 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 mop. Oh, mop. disgusting! So clearly logic played no part in the script here. And he completely bails on his friends, his home, and his girlfriend almost straight away, despite her not only loving him and being beautiful, but she's also pregnant and being kidnapped. Can we watch something that has a more likeable main character, like Mr. Burns, or Jimmy Savile, or Hitler, and I might be lenient if, like I said, they were able to make him deliberately unlikable. But no, the movie still wants you to love him, even after he's turned into more of a dick than he already was. And maybe I could get on board with that if he was more entertaining or charming, but I have never seen a more despicable character in my life. I don't know anyone called Rosie. There's only one woman in my life and that's Kelly Brook, and she loves me, and we fuck like spider monkeys. He's not just crass, he's selfish, inconsiderate, greedy, a little bit bigoted, disgusting, and all of these are shown off in ways that are not only not funny, even if you like him on TV, I doubt you'd like him here, because any sense of wit has been sucked out of him. Much like a... Stop it. The movie makes enough crap jokes to begin with, we don't need to add to that. I'll give this movie credit that... I actually did think it was paced rather decently. I did feel like it was moving along at a good rate, but that's because they stuffed this movie with so many bad jokes that it helps pad out this movie's plot that probably could have fit on a postage stamp. And tragically, this is a movie that has some good actors in it. Kevin Bishop, aka Jim Hawkins from Muppet Treasure Island, doing probably the worst performance of his entire career. Here I am! No, there was a mistake! No, please leave my premises, evil Steve! Or I will call the police. But damn it, I can tell that he's trying. Harish Patel, who I will admit that he does have some good lines every once in a while, and even David Hasselhoff. All of them clearly wondering what they did to be punished by being in this movie. Well, okay, we know what Hasselhoff did, but the others do deserve better than this. Oh, and there's plenty of other cameos in there, like Gary Barlow. As if this movie wasn't insufferable enough, we have to get the gaping charisma vacuum tax dodger himself. Two of the Spice Girls, and Jedwood, because this movie clearly wants to make me kill myself, and by the time this shows up... I don't wanna, wanna dance! <laughs> I'm certainly ready to do that. Vern Troyer is also in the movie, and 
it's sad to say, this is actually one of his better performances in a movie. He actually has lines, so that puts it above the Austin Powers movies, and there aren't that many jokes about his height, so that puts it above the Love Guru. Though, sadly, this movie does feel like if they took all the bad jokes from those movies and put them into their own ultimate form. And what's worse than that is that this movie has a surprisingly really good soundtrack. I Need a Dollar, Cherry Pie, Summertime, Hey Ya, even Bloody She's Like the Wind. Billy Ocean even performs live in the movie. How the hell did they get all these great artists to agree, yep, I'll have my song be in this movie where the biggest joke is the main character describing his piles and jizzing all over himself? Although they did miss an opportunity by having the song The Way You Squeeze My Lemon be on there. I will have to concede that there were a few times that this movie did make me laugh, as much as I hate myself for it. Paddy McGuinness is actually quite funny in the movie, and the main one that sticks out in my head is this one. You're doing karaoke, are you gonna have a go? Nah, mate, singing's not for me. <laughs> Okay, that was funny. But 99% of the movie is some of the worst comedy I have ever seen. This whole movie feels like the worst episode of the Mighty Boosh padded out with dick and ass jokes, and replacing the insane talent of Noel Fielding and Julian Barrett with this bastard. This may be the worst indie movie I have ever seen, and I've seen some terrible crap from people who didn't even know the right way to point a fucking camera, and yet this is absolutely worse than any of those. And the most tragic thing is that it actually did get a theatrical release. I've seen movies on daily motion that are better than this, but it's still not the worst movie I've ever seen. Join us on the last day of this week where we will be getting into the absolute worst, and I can say for certainty it'll be a disaster. The way you squeeze my lemon, baby I'm gonna fall right out of bed 